Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Geometry Chapter 12, Section 6 in this book. What we're talking about is surface area and volume of sphere. So this is classic geometry, what you think shapes, areas, volumes, and we're going to be talking about spheres. So I brought a sphere for you to look at, okay? It's an old one. I think it still has the USSR all still together. Yep. USSR. So this is a vintage uh, look at our sphere, the Earth, but a lot of it's still accurate. All right, <laughs> so a sphere is a ball, like the globe here. The center is if you could like stick something all the way to the very middle on the inside, that's where the center is. So we are looking through our sphere. Uh, if you draw a line from that center to the side, it's the radius. If you draw a line all the way across, it's the diameter. Um, the, uh, if, if you can see inside, well, if you draw a line all the way around, then that is like the equator. If we draw a line all the way around where, the, where it is the very biggest, with the equator, and if we did like a cross section of that, we would see the inside of the earth. That would be interesting. But that makes a cross section, and that cross section of the very biggest place is called the great circle. That's very noble sounding, isn't it? The great circle. If you draw a line somewhere else that's not the biggest, it's called a chord, just like how we learned about chords in regular circles. If you draw the equator around and make the great circle, it cuts the earth into two halves called hemispheres. And even if it's not the earth, even if it's just another sphere, those are still called hemispheres. So you probably have learned this already somewhere along the way, but if not, today's a good day. All right, so the formula for surface area of a sphere is four times pi times the radius squared. And we can sort of see where that comes from. If you take a baseball, I used to coach baseball, homeschool baseball, and I was the batting coach. Uh, and I can coach baseball better than I can play it. I think there's a lot of people like that. But every now and then, people would hit the baseball over the fence and not go get it. But then our ball boys would hit the, there was all boys on our team, would hit the ball over the fence, and then they'd go crawl back there in the poison ivy and go look for it. Well, they'd find these other ones where the leather had just come off, and it looks like this. That's how they cover baseballs. So you can kind of see that, um, that there are four circles they kind of make up what covers a ball, like a baseball. And, and you can sort of see that's where that four comes in. Because one circle is pi r squared, but we have four of them. Sorry, I just threw my pen lid across the room, went to go get it so they don't dry out. We have four of them, so you can sort of think about that's where that four comes from in the formula. All right, so let's do one. Here is a sphere. It has a radius of two, so the surface area is four pi radius squared. 16 pi. But what if we have another sphere and it has a radius of 4? Will doubling the radius double the surface area? Let's see. 4 pi 4 squared is 64 pi. That's a whole lot more than double. 16 doubled is 32. So doubling the radius does not double the surface area. What we learned. All right. So here's a problem. They tell us that the circumference of the great circle is 13.8 pi. So we can imagine that's our circle. They want to know what's the surface area. Well, we know the formula for surface area is 4 pi radius squared. We don't know the radius. So we have to go over here to this formula. Circumference equals 2 pi radius. Remember where radius comes from? We lay the little string around the circle, and half of a, it goes half of a circle pi times, two times around the whole circle. So we can solve for it because we have circumference and then uh, equals 2 pi radius, divide both sides by 2 pi, and that equals 6.9. Now we can go back up here and put it in our formula. 4 pi 6.9 squared is 190.44 pi, which is really considered the right answer, but nobody knows what that is. So you have to estimate it, and it's five, about 598. It will never be exact when pi is involved, because remember, it's irrational. All 
Alright, so here's our baseball. It, they tell us the baseball's radius is 1.45 inches. How much leather approximately does it take to cover it? Well, the surface area is 4 pi radius squared, 4 pi 1.45 squared, 26.4 inches squared. But of course, it's not exact because the leather is doubled up right there in the middle, right? All right, now volume of the sphere. So that was all surface area. The covering, if you want to paint, I'm doing this to the sphere, you can't see. If you want to paint, if you want to cover the sphere with paper, that's the surface area. But if we want to fill it up, with molten lava or whatever's inside the earth, then uh, that's volume. And the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi radius cubed. So here's the problem they gave us to do with this. They said that there's a, a slug that is a cylinder shape that has a radius of one and a height of two. That it's gonna be melted down and made into a sphere. So we're gonna have a metal sphere. And the volume of these two things are going to be the same. The radius won't be the same because once it's melted down, it'll be bigger because all of this extra material will be put into the sphere, if you can imagine that. So first we need the volume of the cylinder, which is pi r squared height. So pi 1 squared times 2, which is 2 pi. <clears throat> That's the volume of the cylinder, which is also the volume of the sphere. Now, here's our volume of the sphere equation, volume of the sphere equals 4 thirds pi radius squared, and we can substitute in that the volume of the sphere is 2 pi, 4 thirds pi radius cubed. We're solving for radius, so we do the opposite. Now what I want to do first is get rid of that 3 because it's making it ugly and it's a fraction, and I want to unfraction it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. The threes cancel out, and on this side I have four pi r squared, and on this side I have two times three pi, which is six. Now y is radius not alone, it's being multiplied by four pi, so I divide both sides by four pi. Look how the pies cancel out. You know, this is, I just saw a recipe for Disney from Disney for apple pie, and talking about pie, I know they're not the same thing, but it's making me want to go make that Disney apple pie, but I don't have any apples, so. Okay, so back on track. So why is R not alone now? It's being cubed. What's the opposite? The, cu the cubed root. So I do the cubed root of both sides, and I get the radius is about 1.14. If you don't know how to do a cubed root on your calculator, go watch the, the, rest, the, the other part of this chapter. I think I taught it in 12.5. I think I taught it in the last one. If not, if I taught it 12.4, I'm not sure. It all runs together after a while. All right, come back. And we're going to do our very last section of this book. Yay! Math is great.